this is not enough people to really fight up against powerful people. This is like something that happened in the movies. My name is Christian Gross, and I'm a professor of political science and public policy at the University of Southern California. And I'm also the academic director of the USC Schwarzenegger Institute. The USC Schwarzenegger Institute was founded by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger when he stepped down as governor of California to focus on environmental policy, political and election reform, and after school education. A political science professor is really, you do research and you write and then you teach. You come up with new ideas, you analyze the world. I write books, I write articles, and basically trying to understand why people do what they do. When I was really young, I was interested in politics. I had some really amazing political science professors. I was really interested in studying racial redistricting. Ended up as a professor by age 27. I play video games a little bit. I do like classic video games. The style of play in this particular game looks appealing to me because I like this sort of throwback style to older video games. The year is 20XX. The world is in the throes of global capitalism. Workers everywhere toil daily for a pittance. Many work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. But no matter how hard they work, it'll never be enough to be free. For those who do not own the means of production will never know real freedom. The media is owned by the rich. The political system is owned by the rich. All capital is owned by the rich. People peacefully protested, but were met with violence. Those who own for a living rule those who work for a living. But all of that is about to change. Tonight we write. The beginning is interesting. I think it's a little bit of, of a caricature. Definitely wealthy people have greater power and interest in the political system, but there is a decent amount of what we might call pluralism, where different groups of interest have different powers. So a lot of times there's people who are wealthy, don't agree with one another, and those people fight it out a little bit in the world of politics and the world of economics. Factory Town Herald says tear gas is deployed, riot cops, workers clash. So it's a relatively small group. There's only one way through, direct action. Press right trigger to use weapon. One thing is this is not enough people to really fight up against powerful <laughs> people. This is like something that happened in the movies. There'd be one or two people fighting against a large group of people. And collective action, however it's engaged in, you're gonna need to have a lot more people as part of your collective. Workers of the world unite, let's liberate this building. So it looks like there's more workers. If you've got just a few people, it's only gonna go so far, but if you've got a large group, same thing if you're trying to engage in any kind of direct action against government or the state, the more people you have, the more likely you'll get the outcome that you want. Maybe this is the corporation security team that you're, you're fighting against, I'm not sure. This looks very dystopian. It's dystopian, but with kind of a old school classic vibe to it. You know, collective action is really hard to do. Oh, area liberated. Looks like there are eight workers saved. That seemed relatively easy. What I was saying is that in political science, the collective action is really hard to do. It's always difficult to get people to form groups together. There's something called the free rider problem. It's easy to free ride and let other people do it. If you're in any group and you want to organize with somebody else, it's easier to let other people do it. In this case, like, you know, getting shot at by a tank in the video game, and you kind of hang back and bear all the fruits of the work of the other people. Whipple Company Board promises end to protest. Giant flying laser fist stock surges. So I could imagine that. A stock price is probably going to go up if there's sort of less revolution. <laughs> Nine or 10 workers here now, a little bit larger group. The board board has decided you'd be more valuable to the shareholders if you were dead. That seems a little extreme, but it's pretty fun for a game. <laughs> these hands are the invisible hand of the market. Are these hands for like the fist of solidarity for workers? I'm not sure. I guess that the hands are bad. Area liberated, workers safe. The group of the workers together is keeping you alive in the game. And that's cool for the group collective outcomes to try to win the game. But in real life, when you are the individual who's getting killed, you might just want to protect your own self individually. And that's one of the reasons it's so hard to engage in any kind of collective action. Here's a huge squid, which is more fun. I don't know if squids are representative of the corporate or government power structures. The fight was hard, but the dockyards have been salvaged from the dangers of the company and their toxic chemical storage. The windblown snow now signaled the winds of change as the workers' revolution took control of the ports. Take my sludge, you filth. You deserve it. You haven't seen the last of me, and you'll never get past the gates of our states. Ha. Of area liberated, workers saved. There's one worker and there's six flat workers. Pretty depressing. 
perhaps more accurate. It is really hard for groups to engage in any kind of direct action because this is what happens, right? It's not just about a protest. There are harms that could potentially come to people who are engaged in protests from the civil rights movement in the 1960s to, you know, going back to the sort of the rise of labor unions in the late 1800s and early 1900s. I think this game's hearkening back to that era of early labor unrest and violence that would engage. One thing that's not in the game is the public who's neither a worker nor owns the company or is maybe a government official. The public and their views on these things matter a lot. Monster squids would be okay, but you know, workers killing people would cause the public to be actually less inclined to the workers. Companies killing people and killing the workers would also make the public less inclined. And this might seem unrealistic, but back in the 1800s, there was labor unrest that would lead to people's lives being lost. Okay, there's the bad guy, I guess the corporation owner. Face me without all your weapons and I'll teach you to stay in one place. All right, so it looks like you can get them really easy. He's just sitting there. Maybe that's the point. Finally, at the very end of it all, if it's just one person versus one person, it's not so difficult. Oh, and that's it. The riches of Bowling Green Estates seemed otherworldly to the workers as they fought amid the mansions of the wealthy. Yachts sailed away in the distance as the rich fled in panic. They'd gotten fat off the hard work of those who labored for years, and now those workers had come to share in the spoils. As the years went by, the new ways took root and thrived. Shop democracy replaced the old hierarchies in the factory. Goods were produced for use, and need instead of profit, and the people enjoyed a plentiful life. Without a fear of what the future may hold, and liberated from the cruel hands of their capitalist masters, the workers and their children lived a happy, healthy life, free from want and worry. But would the rest of the world allow this to continue? Area liberated, workers saved, just there, that last worker, and that's it. I think this is a fun game. The end of it feels hard to imagine happening in real life, and then if it did, I don't think it would be all fun and games. The game sort of takes as an assumption that you are engaging in direct action. That's realistic if we think historically in the 1800s and the 1900s. The political action and then the direct action in this game is all about the direct action. If they want to do another version of this game, it might be interesting to incorporate the political action and the direct action, the direct action sometimes by itself serves as a threat to move people in the political world. And if in the absence of direct action, the political world might not move, but they just need to be concerned about collective action sometimes to get people in politics to move. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, then make sure you subscribe. And you know what? Check the playlist out. There's plenty more. Go on, have fun. Keep watching. I'll just be here.